Hi everyone, um, my name is Vasiliki and I am the Guild President. Today is International Women's Day, a global celebration of social, economic, cultural and political achievements of um, women. So in recognition of today, I'm joined by Wendy Beetlestone, United States District Judge, um, and alumna at the University of Liverpool. Um, she is also our newest chancellor at the university. Um, Wendy is our 11th chancellor and importantly, she is the first woman to hold this position. So as I mentioned, um, Wendy is an alumna at the university. She was born in Nigeria and educated in Yorkshire. She graduated with a BA in uh, philosophy in 1984 um, before embarking on a career as a TV journalist and then entering a legal profession a decade later. Um, in 2019, the university awarded uh, Wendy an honorary degree in recognition and celebration of her fearless commitments to fairness and justice throughout her career. Uh, today, uh, we'll be finding out a little more about Wendy uh, and what she'll be doing in her new role as our Chancellor. So hello, Wendy. I'm delighted that you could take the time to meet with me today. Uh, and thank you so much for coming. Well, very, very good to meet you, Vasiliki, um, and uh, thank you for that very nice introduction. <laughs> no worries at all. Um, so, my first question uh, would be, what does a university chancellor do? Well, um, a chancellor is the ceremonial and titular head of the university. Uh, that means that um, the chancellor is not involved in the management of the university, the administration of the university, anything that impacts day to day at the university, uh, but in essence uh, represents uh, the university as an ambassador uh, internationally, uh, regionally, locally. Um, and it, how that works is that the, the chancellor uh, is always at the graduation ceremonies, uh, making sure that the graduation proceeds uh, properly, uh, but also works with the vice chancellor and the vice chancellor's staff um, to, uh, to, to, to make sure that the university's um, uh, renown across the world and again in England and regionally is, uh, is, is, um, uh, is, is known and improved. Thank you for that. That kind of follows nicely to my next question is, why Liverpool? Uh, well, I, I didn't necessarily, um, I didn't necessarily think that I would ever have the honour of being the Chancellor of Liverpool. That was something that I hadn't planned in my career, um, but uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful capstone um, to, to my career. Um, I've been involved in various education, educational institutions uh, in the United States um, at various points uh, uh, of my career in lots of different capacities. Um, and so this is really the, the, uh, the, the acme of, 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 uh, of, of that particular uh, focus of my career. Liverpool, because Liverpool has a place in my heart. Uh, I love Liverpool. I had a great few years there. Um, as with you, I was uh, very, very involved in uh, the Guild um, at multiple levels. And uh, so so the fact that I'm coming back there as Chancellor is just, just wonderful. Do you have a favourite place in Liverpool or a favourite memory of Liverpool? <laughs> Putting you on the spot a little bit. <laughs> well, um, well, so... I, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure I have a favorite place, but I do have memories. Um, like you, I was just, I was working, playing, doing girl stuff. Um, and so in essence, I would wake up in the morning, go to classes, uh, do my work for the next day, uh, go to the guild, do whatever it was that I was doing at the guild. Then I would go to the pub and then... Um, <laughs> There was <laughs> there was a place called um, I think it was on Prince Prince Prince's um, Avenue called um, Silver Sa Silver Sands the Silver Sands is the Silver Sands still there? Um, I don't know, um, <laughs> but I can check that. <laughs> well, it was it was an after hours club, and you in order to uh, to get into the club, you had to buy a pint of beer. Um, and then it stayed open until two o'clock in the morning. So I would stay at the Silver Sands and then I would go home and then I would repeat the next day. Uh, so so that was my my general uh, my my general way of being uh, while I was at university. That's a great marketing tactic from that pub, pub as well for the students. <laughs> yes, <it was>. anyway. <laughs> 
Um, so what does it mean to you to be an honorary graduate? Well, I was I was I was honored. I was very <laughs> honored. Um, I don't know whether you have been. Oh, you have been at the graduation ceremony, so you know how it works. Yeah. And I can tell what what happens is uh, you you, you uh, go on the stage with um, the chancellor and the vice chancellor and the and and the, the deans and and uh, the various folks who are up there on the stage, and at some point um, your name is called out, and there is a um, a, a one of the um, professors is a, uh, a specialist in rhetoric and particularly in praise rhetoric uh, from Roman times. And so that person has, in my case, had studied everything, everything about me and essentially told me in front of all these people for about 20 minutes about myself. And <laughs> as he was talking, I was like, wow, is that me? Um, and it was, it, I, I actually, as I was, as I was on the stage initially, I'm, I'm sort of a, uh, I'm, I'm out there in the community a lot, but I'm also kind of, kind of private in, in some ways. And uh, I, I, I felt um, I felt like I was reeling with all of this information and attention on me. And uh, about five minutes in, I thought, nope, just this is never going to happen to you again. Just sit there, listen and take it in. And it was it was it was really special. That really does sound so special and amazing. And I felt like even though they didn't do that at my graduation, I felt like even them calling my name was like a great achievement. So I can't imagine how that must have felt. So, yeah, I, I can imagine that must have been really amazing. Yeah. And so how do you hope to make an impact in this role? Well, I want to align my what I do with the mission of the university. Uh, and I want to make sure that I reach out to all constituencies. So by all constituencies, I mean not only the administration, but also uh, the academics, the students, uh, also regional leaders and, uh, and alumni. Um, so everything I do is going to be focused not only on that, but also on um, where the university is going. So particularly the university is very focused, as you know, on sustainability. Uh, so to the extent that uh, I can use my chancellor to help uh, push that particular mission, uh, then I'm going to do it. Great. Right. Well, can I ask you a question? Um, is there anything that you, so as as I, as I we've spoken about, I am I was very involved in the Guild. I was, uh, you know, one of the student leaders. I was um, head of the student newspaper, uh, did debate and all the rest of it. Um, and I remember the Chancellor reaching out to us um, and we had dinner with the Chancellor and I was, I remember it to this day. So is there anything that you, as the leader of the Guild of Undergraduates and leader of the students, would like your Chancellor uh, to work towards? Um, so I guess mine would firstly be similar to what you said, that sense of visibility. So I think it is important for a Chancellor to be involved in students and to know that they're essentially there and whether that be graduation or kind of other events so I think it is kind of that figurehead for the university but for me personally I also think it's important that the chancellor is able to kind of inspire students so you're an alumna you are a student officer um, it kind of emphasizes that students can like look up and admire the person and know that all students at the university have the potential to achieve a vast range of things no matter what career path they kind of go down and as you mentioned you didn't know that you would end up being chancellor at the university and it's kind of like that embodiment of you may not know what you want to do yet but these are all the amazing things that alumna and kind of past students have achieved so I guess kind of that's that would be my my view of it and also just being an advocate um for causes that students and as well the university is passionate about about their values as you said about sustainability um the trajectory of the university in the next years coming like I think those are really important um as like to embody like the role of a chancellor essentially well, I mean, I'm certainly willing to, and I want to, to work with you and and your colleagues um, to make sure that I can engage with it with the with the guild. Um, and uh, I actually had intended to bring it today, but I but I forgot it. Um, I have this little silver platter, 
um, that was handed to me during graduation, which says that I am a lifelong member of the Guild of Undergraduates. And so I have that thing. And <laughs> when I go there, I expect to be able to walk into that building and anything that is happening at the Guild of Undergraduates, I expect, it, I expect to be invited, accepted, warmly welcomed. Yeah. Um, and if not, I'm going to be carrying my little silver platter to make sure that everyone <laughs> knows that I'm supposed to be there. You are 100% invited to anything and everything that you want to come to. Do you have no concerns about that? Just let me know. <laughs> Thank you so much for that question. I'm going to reverse it um, back to you now. <laughs> um, so just to talk a bit about International Women's Day, I guess, kind of what that means for you as being the first um, kind of female chancellor. Um, so, yeah, if you have any thoughts on that. Well, I, I think I, I, I've spent most of my life uh, trying to make sure uh, that women uh, not only have a voice at the table, but that many women have a voice uh, at the table. Uh, I, I firmly believe uh, that things, and, and it's a belief backed up by research, um, that things just run better uh, when there are more women involved. I don't mean to say uh, that's, uh, that, uh, that uh, men cannot do the job they can, but you just have to have more voices. Uh, and, and you know, by the way, it's not just gender diversity, it's also racial diversity, it's income diversity, it's background diversity, because if you have lots and lots of different voices thinking about a particular issue, uh, the results are going to improve. Um, I think uh, Dame Janet Beer, the former vice chancellor, really focused on that. Uh, and uh, and I, I, it, was, it was wonderful to watch her in action with, uh, with her, uh, cabinet, many, many women. Um, and I, I, I think that uh, being the first woman chancellor uh, for me um, is, it's not necessarily about me, although it's great, uh, but it's if, if to the extent that I am um, a, uh, an, a, an example uh, to follow uh, so that other women believe that they can, um, they can ascend to these, these positions, uh, I'm, I'm very, very pleased, very pleased. I guess I kind of share the same view in that sense. Like, I think it is a great opportunity for me to be in as well. But essentially, I feel like at some points I kind of represent a sense of, I don't know, I will, I hope to kind of inspire other women to nominate themselves and come into these types of position. And especially since I'm a black woman as well, and I kind of nominated myself based on a previous officer who was also a black woman who told me that I should believe in myself and that I should kind of strive to achieve whatever I want. And that's how I came into this position as president now. So I just feel like I share the same views as like, it's important to represent and inspire students so I hope that is also what I'm doing as well whilst being in this position um, and as we have like a all-female team the second ever and the first since I'm gonna butcher the year um, I think it's 1980 1988 but yeah so the second ever female team I just think it's important that kind of we encourage that diversity and as you said not just within gender but all types of diversity in that because I just think things run better and there's more um, innovative ideas when there's a diverse range of people working together because you think of things that maybe wouldn't be thought of if it was in a different room essentially. Yeah and I, th I think your point about uh, being an inspiration is, is really important but I also there's a whole other area as well um, and this is an area I really focus on is that because you are a woman in power and you're, this is your first taste of power, and I assume that you will have much more, but influence is also as good as good power. So power, influence, both of those, those things are good. Um, but you can really reach out and help individual women. Um, you can do it either when you're at the table um, by, by promoting uh, interests. I say women's interests, but I mean all people's interests because I think women's interests are all people's interests. Um, but you also as you go through your career, um, can take other women by the hand. I One of my great joys uh, is that I have mentored women over the many years of my career. And so I have a whole cohort of women. I get so excited when they're promoted um, to important positions. Uh, people I've been you know, working with for 
20 years and suddenly you know they're in in the spot uh, and and that's that's just a it, that's very gratifying and I think that it's something um, that you and others in your position are I know that you're going to do it as you as you move on uh, through your careers yeah that's that's definitely something that I strive to do so <laughs> yeah I look forward to the next couple of years of supporting people and helping people because I think that's kind of the definition in a way of this role um you ultimately represent student voice but I guess yeah so but thank you for that um I guess we're moving on to my final question that I have um so what are you looking forward to doing in your role as chancellor well um I have I have some plans <laughs> <laughs> um which i have which um haven't really coalesced fully um but uh, but as i said they do involve reaching out uh, across the board uh, and those plans are are big and little um and uh, you know i i I'll, I'll tell you what i've been talking about um but obviously these things have to be worked out um i would like i know there's a tremendous number of first generation students at, at liverpool um, and I know that first generation students face uh, a, a lot of issues which uh, which other students may or may not face. Uh, so I think it would be very interesting to work with a group of those students and as they go through the university and, and provide some kind of mentorship there. Um, I also, and this aligns with what I was talking about earlier, aligning with the mission of the university uh, on sustainability. Um, I'd like to do a chancellor's uh, lectureship every year, uh, which will have people from across the university presenting on uh, climate uh, or sustainability issues. Um, and I, I think that it's really, those in issues are really interesting from all sorts of perspectives, obviously from the legal perspective. Um, I did philosophy undergraduate, philosoph philosophical perspective, the engineering uh, perspective, the medical perspective. So I really think that this could be uh, a tremendous opportunity to hear from the tremendous minds uh, we have at, at Liverpool. Um, and then here's a here's a silly one. It's not really a silly, but I row, um, and I would. I know Liverpool's oldest club is the <laughs> rowing club, and uh, I have asked the vice chancellor if he could reach out to the head of the rowing team to make sure that at least once a year I can row with the rowing team. So now I've said it on video. Yeah, I there's am confidence. Going to row with the University <laughs> of Liverpool rowing team. Okay, it's out there. Give me a call, coach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure they will now that you're on record for saying that. <laughs> no, no take backs. <laughs> no take backs. No it's take happening. backs. Um, but that sounds like really interesting stuff. And I know that as kind of a guild, we're um eager to be a part, well, we are a part of the university strategy for sustainability and their kind of net zero plans, particularly our vice president Ella. She works really closely with the university. And I think it's something that we as a guild would welcome to look at. Um, what each section of the university is doing and then bringing that collectively to see how we can kind of better um, our sustainability policies as a collective both as a guild and also as a university so that sounds like really exciting things um, and we welcome them <laughs> so I think that's me rounding everything up I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming to talk to me today um, on International Women's Day um, to celebrate women in power and to kind of discuss discuss sorry issues um, around that and kind of celebrate and embody that. So thank you so much for coming today, Wendy. Oh, you're very welcome. And thank you very much too. Thank you.